Now, let me discuss the effect of these anticholinergic drugs on the cardiovascular system. Now, if you take the effect of these drugs on the cardiovascular system, first you take this particular atropine. Remember, this particular atropine, initially it will cause bradycardia. Right? Atropine causes bradycardia. Right? Bradycardia initially. Alright? Whereas, when you increase the dose of the atropine, this will cause the tachycardia. Right? Upon increasing the dose, Right? Upon increasing the dose, this particular atropine will cause tachycardia. Now, now let me tell you why or how this particular atropine will cause the bradycardia. The bradycardia action of this particular atropine is due to inhibition of the presynaptic muscarinic receptors. Right? This particular bradycardia action is due to inhibition of the you take mainly the atropine is acting on the m2 receptors now you take this m2 receptors right mainly it is acting on the m2 receptors for the action on the heart for the action on the cardiovascular system these m2 receptors they are present on the presynaptic nerve terminal and these m2 receptors they are also present in the postsynaptic nerve terminal right post synaptic nerve terminal now now you take the atropine atropine how it will cause bradycardia is by causing the inhibition of the presynaptic muscarinic receptors right so so the atropine what it will do is it will inhibit the presynaptic m2 receptors right presynaptic M2 receptors. Is that clear? So, by causing the inhibition of the presynaptic muscarinic receptors, this particular atropine will cause bradycardia. Whereas, let me tell you how this particular atropine will cause tachycardia. When you further increase the dose, what this atropine will do is, atropine will cause the inhibition of the postsynaptic M2 receptors that will result in tachycardia okay so tachycardia is due to inhibition of the post synaptic right due to inhibition of the post synaptic m2 receptors now where is this particular atropine used in the cardiovascular system we use this particular atropine in the treatment of arrhythmias like av block right and digitalis induced bradycardia we use this atropine right so this atropine is used in the treatment of right used in the treatment of arrhythmias right used in the treatment of arrhythmias like av block like av block and this particular atropine, it is also used in the treatment of digitalis induced bradycardia. Okay, so in case of digitalis induced bradycardia and as well as in the treatment of arrhythmias like AV block, this particular atropine use, used. And what you have to remember is, these particular anticholinergic drugs they have negligible effect on the blood pressure right negligible effect on the blood pressure and as well as on the cardiac contractility okay so on the blood pressure and as well as the cardiac contractility these anticholinergic drugs they have negligible effect their main use is related to your heart rate right they are used in the treatment of arrhythmias of the av block 
and digitalis induced bradycardia we use this particular atropine right so this atropine can cause bradycardia initially due to inhibition of the presynaptic mTOR receptors this atropine can cause even tachycardia due to inhibition of the postsynaptic mTOR receptors right next let me discuss the effect of the anticholinergic drugs on the respiratory system now first of all you take the cholinergic nervous system so you take this particular cholinergic nervous system the cholinergic nervous system they will stimulate the m3 receptors and they will cause bronchoconstriction right they will cause bronchoconstriction now when you give this particular anticholinergic drugs right when you give this particular anticholinergic drugs what these particular anticholinergic drugs will do is this anticholinergic drugs will reverse right anticholinergic drugs will reverse the bronchoconstrictor action which is caused by the stimulation of the m3 receptors now now let me tell you which are the important anticholinergic drugs which are used in the respiratory system right we have two important drugs that is ipratropium bromide right we have two important drugs that is ipratropium bromide and as well as thiotropium bromide right ipratropium bromide and as well as thiotropium bromide so you take your ipratropium bromide and as well as thiotropium bromide both of them they are muscarinic receptor antagonist right both of them they are muscarinic receptor antagonist right and where are they used these drugs that is ipratropium bromide and as well as thiotropium bromide they are useful in the treatment of right they are useful in the treatment of copd that is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and they are also useful in the treatment of bronchial asthma right so they are useful in the treatment of copd and as well as bronchial asthma now you take this ipratropium bromide ipratropium bromide it has non selective action right this has non selective action right non selective action in the sense this ipratropium bromide it will act on all muscarinic receptors right will it will act on all muscarinic receptors whereas thiotropium bromide it is having somewhat selective blocking action this particular thiotropium bromide it will selectively block right it will selectively block m1 and as well as m3 receptors right the thiotropium bromide it selectively blocks m1 and as well as m3 receptors whereas ipratropium bromide it will block all the muscarinic receptors it is having the non selective action next apart from this we have one more very important anticholinergic drug which is called as the glycopyrrolate so if you take this particular glycopyrrolate now what is the use of this particular glycopyrrolate is the glycopyrrolate it is used as the pre anesthetic medication right it is used as the pre anesthetic medication what it will do why it is used as a pre anesthetic medication remember this particular glycopyrrolate will decrease right it will decrease the respiratory secretions and not only that it will also decrease the reflex bronchospasm during general anesthesia okay so it will decrease the respiratory secretions and not only that it will also decrease the reflex bronchospasm during general anesthesia okay during general anesthesia so that is the usage of this glycopyrrolate right so let me shortly revise the respiratory system action these anticholinergic drugs 
if you see they will cause bronchodilatation how do they cause this bronchodilatation is first of all you take the cholinergic nervous system or the cholinergic drugs they will stimulate the m3 receptors and they will cause bronchoconstriction the anticholinergic drugs they will reverse the bronchoconstrictor action which is caused due to stimulation of the m3 receptors the anticholinergic drugs very important in the treatment of copd and bronchial asthma are ipratropium bromide and as well as thiotropium bromide both of them they are having muscarinic receptor antagonistic activity you take this ipratropium bromide it is have it has the non selective action that is it blocks all the muscarinic receptors whereas thiotropium bromide it will selectively block m1 and as well as m3 receptors next we have another very important drug that is glycopyrrolate glycopyrrolate it is used as the pre anesthetic medication mainly to decrease the secretion and as well as the reflex spasm during general anesthesia next next let me discuss the action of these cholinergic anti cholinergic drugs on the gastrointestinal tract that is on the gat right next let me discuss the effect on the gat let me tell you this particular anti cholinergic drugs what they do they will decrease the motility of the gat they will decrease the tone in the gat and they will also decrease the secretions within the gastrointestinal tract right so they will decrease the motility they will decrease the tone right and not only that they will also decrease the secretions right they will also decrease the secretions in the gastrointestinal tract now let me tell you what are those anti cholinergic drugs which are used in the treatment of various gi disorders now you take in case of the peptic ulcers disease in peptic ulcer disease we want that the hcl secretion should be reduced now we have two important drugs which which are used in the treatment of the peptic ulcer disease like we have what is called as pyrenzepine and then we have telenzepine so remember this particular pyrenzepine and as well as the telenzepine they are selective m1 blockers right they are selective m1 blockers which are used in the treatment of right which are used in the treatment of the peptic ulcer disease all right next next another important thing is you take this particular anti cholinergic drugs what they do is they are used in the treatment of the intestinal colic right because you take these particular drugs these anti cholinergic drugs they are useful as the anti spasmodic agent you take the cholinergic nervous system what it will do to the gat it will cause the spasm whereas anti cholinergic nervous system what they will cause they will relieve the spasm that is they act as the anti spasmodic agents all right so now what are the drugs right what are those group of drugs which are useful as the anti spasmodic agents for the treatment of intestinal colic okay so in case of this particular intestinal colic these anti cholinergic drugs they will reduce the spasm so they are used as anti spasmodic agents right used as the anti spasmodic agents now what are those drugs which are used as anti spasmodic agents is like we have hyoscine then we have dicyclomen then we have propanthaline then we have oxyphenonium and then we have the other important drug that is clidinium so these drugs that is hyoscine dicyclomine propanthaline oxyphenonium and clidinium they are useful as the anti spasmodic agents for the treatment of intestinal colic next the other important use of this anti cholinergic drugs in the git are they are useful for 
irritable bowel syndrome and as well as the overactive bladder so IBS which is irritable bowel syndrome and as well as the overactive bladder okay so even in this clinical condition also some of the anticholinergic drugs are useful now what are those drugs are like we have very important drug that is darifenacin right we have very important drug that is darifenacin and then we have another important drug that is solifenacin so you see here darifenacin and as well as solifenacin they are selective m3 blockers right they are selective m3 blockers this particular selective m3 blocking action is useful in the treatment of irritable bubble syndrome and as well as overactive bladder right that is the drugs are darifenacin and the other drug is the solifenacin so this is about the action of these drugs in the GAT so remember these anticholinergic drugs they will reduce the motility tone and as well as the secretion within the gastrointestinal tract for example, you take pyrenzepine and telenzepine, they act as the selective M1 blockers. That is the reason why they are used in the treatment of the peptic ulcer disease. Next, you take in case of the intestinal colic, right? They are having the antispasmodic action, mainly drugs like dicyclomine and as well as clidinium. So they are used in the treatment of the intestinal colic. Next, the two important drugs that is darifenacin and as well as solifenacin they are selective m3 blockers which are useful for the irritable bubble syndrome and as well as the overactive bladder